Dear Neck Face, Today I took the one from Chambers. The guy hunched over me, eyeing the map, had something silver in his pocket. Spray paint. Red. I thought of you. He was wide set, this man. Beautiful. Continuous. With a... Yup, it hit me. I said hello. He grunted. Did you grunt at me? Was it you I said hello to? If not, no, I'm thinking of you. You've got a lit window in my brain. Well, I'm leaving this note next to your latest tag, as usual. Fuck, it's grunt work climbing billboards and fire escapes, but if you can do it. Yours, yours, yours. Sloan. Dear Neckface, I saw what you did at my Chamber Street subway stop. Big bubble letters? Neckface, sweetie! God, notice my... I don't want to call them revisions. Okay, supplements? I transformed your C's. Those open mouth letters with down dipping curves became closed mouth hearts. And I've got a confession. The paint pens used to symbolize our love? Stolen. I tucked them right under my pashmina at Home Depot on 23rd Street. What can I say? We're outlaws. Desperado numero uno and desperado numero dos. It's funny how love can fill a girl with bravery. Well, I'll be cruising Tribeca tonight, supplementing new tags. Figured out your habit of canvassing one neighborhood at a time. Adorable. Yours, yours, yours. Desperado numero dos, a.k.a. Sloan. Dear Neckface, are you mad at me? There's a new Neckface at the Chamber Street station. It's right above the old one, but what, no hearts? Plus, there are big black X's through all my supplemented tags. You are mad at me. Huh. Well, let me just say, and excuse my being blunt, you are a little out of line. I mean, you're a great guy with a great message, but what you're doing, it... It kind of pisses me off. If you're not afraid of scaling buildings and eluding policemen, then buddy, be not afraid of love. Will the itty bitty bombers with their witty bitty spray paint say neck face went soft? Let them. Leave those pussies the Big Pond Memorial on Avenue C. Let them touch up murals outside the Third Street Chase. Reveal to Manhattan our hearts. Get with the fucking program ASAP. S. Dear Sloan, you seem like a nice chick. You've got a real vocabulary, like Pashmina. I like that. Now, my question is this, and don't be offended, but why does a smart chick such as you behave like such an illiterate cunt for brains? You know, when you first started writing these letters, I said, I, a fan. Fans are dope. But lately, well, you've just been fucking my shit the fuck up. Hear what I'm saying? Now, if you fuck with my graffiti once more, I'm going to hit you with my car. Yes, lady, I will straight up mow you down. Now, I'm leaving this note by a new tag here, which we can call a test. Screw it up, I've got my car keys. And for the record, the dude on the train was not me. I got a neck. I just write neck face because it's funny. Neck face. Dear Sloan, I got something to say to you. How are you? My last note was gone the morning after I tacked it up, so I'm guessing you read it. Listen, maybe I used a little too much raunchy language in there. For that, and that only, I'm sorry. Of course I wouldn't hit you with my car. And me, I don't even have a car. And regarding violence, I am, confidentially speaking, anti. But I got really ripped by taggers who wouldn't try ripping me two days ago. So that's why I went all neck face on your ass. I look. The notes you used to write served as solid reading material on the subway. Since you quit writing, I end up stuck with the paper, which is fucked. So, if you've got free time, it's straight if you leave letters by my tags. I won't get all jacked up about it, and I'll have something to look at on the train. Also, and very rarely, they're funny, making me feel joy. Pretty numb nuts, huh? Okay, later. Desperado number one, aka Neckface. Dear Sloan, what the cock? How many times does a guy have to say sorry? Here I am, stuck with the newspaper. Donald Trump, Ryan Queefcrest. How about a few brief words? Okay, 
Like you confessed paint pens to me, here I am confessing to you. That day on the train, a guy dropped a paint can, red cap, silver can. That wasn't a guy, that was me. You said hello, I knew it was you. I just bugged out. I'm afraid you called me, but the world is full of things that make me shit my drawers. Just think what I look like. I've got a fucking neck face. Food shoots down it, words blow out of it. How could you call me continuous or beautiful? So the message here is, I miss the joy of you. Even though that joy is what shook and messed me up to start with. Now, be careful around the place I'm sticking this note. Been trying to tag less dangerous spots on account of your safety. This one I tagged high, high enough so you can't miss it. So write something, NF. Dear Sloan, please excuse the handwriting. My arthritis worsens in this weather. This is Lester Mulvey. Carl Williams, who you knew as Neckface, was my roommate at the 126th Street Y. Last night, Carl slipped off a billboard down on Houston Street. I regret to tell you that he died on impact. For me too, this is sad. Carl was like a son. Often he confided his feelings to me, which for Carl was no easy task. I'm not sure if you knew, but Carl cared for you deeply. I hope you don't mind that he shared your letters with me. This was in the event of a tragedy like the one that transpired last night. Therefore, I am taping this letter to the inside of a beam on a Chamber Street subway station. Carl's funeral, which I am sponsoring, will take place at the Morningside Funeral Home on Wednesday at 3 p.m. My condolences. Lester Mulvey. Dear Lester, I'm sorry I couldn't make Wednesday's ceremony. Cowardice is the reason. Carl Neckface Williams was a man I never met but knew I loved. If I'd met him, if I'd known him half as well as you, maybe I wouldn't have given up on Carl as quickly. I think of him. As always, he has a lit window in my brain. I need to ask and be honest, please. Am I to blame for Carl's death? Might he have slipped on purpose? Did I hurt him? Now, I don't have a room number. There was none in your note, but I'm sure the people at the Y will direct this your way. I'm so sorry, Lester. Neckface was like your son. I'm so, so sorry. Sloan. Dear Sloan, no, no, no. In answer to your questions, sleep easy, darling babe. Sincerely, Lester Mulvey. Dear Lester, I don't completely get the meaning of your last letter. What do you mean you're calling it off? Here she's finally feeling sorry. And this, after rolling the dice with that made-up funeral. There was a part of me that thought she might actually come, call our bluff. But we lucked out. Now, with your crazy behavior, you're incensing me, Lester. First, I pay you off. Give you the whole two-guy room at the Y. I even trade you my sneakers for your ate-up, stinky-ass Tevas. You have athlete's foot, you sneaker-thieving fuck. I'm all up in your fungus, bro. Don't even think about defaulting on set arrangement, Mr. Mulvey. There are real stakes here. A man's heart, which may not appeal to your sympathies. Lucky for you, I have no cell phone and had time to rewrite this. First draft contained hella F-bombs. So, in closing, don't fucking wind me up again or I'm coming from my fucking room and my fucking Adidas with interest, you fucking asshat. Carl. No sympathy? I wretched the accusation. Sympathy I possess in surplus. Sympathy I dole out for the deserve it. But to manipulate an innocent child, no more. Why then did I agree to aid you at first? That I hate your no-neck guts is no big secret. Answer, to get a delinquent out of my room, my life, my universe. And also, well, for the shoes. In retrospect, I shouldn't have done it. Still, I have held up my end, responding to two letters from Sloan, which are enclosed. I should also mention, your threats do not remotely affect me. 
Should you attempt to move in again or take back my Adidas, an unnamed friend will send copies of our former correspondence to one Sloan Churney. Therefore, Carl, if anyone in this equation is the ass hat, you Carl are the ass hat. Ass hat. P.S. This is the final note I leave with the Jamaican woman at the front desk. The role of makeshift mailman angers this individual, and I fear she'll soon defile my breakfast. Dear Lester, Sloan again. This note is to inform you I'm ending it tonight with a gun. There's nothing you can do. I miss that super talented genius tiger so much it eats my freaking guts out. Wow, Lester. Wish you never told me about neck face dying. Really sent me sideways. Yours truly, Sloan. Which I already said, but you knew that. <laughs> you low-down, rotten son of a no-neck harlot with a head looking like two shoulders got sick and threw up. I could strangle you until there's finally space between your chin and collarbones. You really think I would fall for it? Motherfucker, you spelled Sloan with two L's. If I were ten years younger, I'd go neck face on your ass. Shit. And I know you stole my shoes, Carl. Fifty-year-old man walking around Harlem with duct tape on tube socks. It ain't right. It may interest you to know I sent all of our letters to Miss Cherney. Came clean, confessed my sins. Haven't heard from her since, which could only mean she's learned the truth and is totally disgusted. So in closing, please excuse the brevity of this letter. I've spent the past hour picking Miss Caribbean Rhythm's Lee Press-Ons out of my oatmeal. Ever eat oatmeal full of a Jamaican lady's fake fingernails? Changes a man. Mulvey, out. Dear Carl, last week I received a package from Lester Mulvey. It took me over an hour to read the letters. I'm there in the moment, peeling back pages. You fake your death to win back my heart? You actually dream up a faux funeral? You press Lester to keep up the ruse? You trade your sneakers? You trade your bed? I close the package, take inventory of myself, ask, Sloan, sweetie, how are you feeling? And the answer is instantaneous. I'm... I'm horny. I am way seriously horny. I feel like chocolate and oysters had a baby, and I ate that baby. So I grab the closest writing implement, and I start scrawling. Dear Carl, last week I received a message from Lester, and then I realize this is one letter you'll have to earn. So if you want me, you'll have one last chance. I'll be waiting with this note at the Chamber Street subway station by the beam on which neck face is twice crossed out and scrawled clearly and cleanly. And I'll read this to you, if you let me see you. If you let me see you and your beautiful, continuous neck face.